And now let's return to our tour of Denver's new crime lab with Deputy Director Mark Olin. Welcome, this is the new crime lab. A lot of space, like I promised you. Um, we don't have a lot of furniture in here yet. Uh, we're gonna end up putting a lot of waiting room type soft furniture. But the thing that you're gonna see here is space. And this is just the entry area, security desk, uh, stairs that lead up into our auditorium. A lot of the public artwork that we're using here. Uh, this is from an artist in California, Cliff Garten. And the one that we're looking at here is representing a bullet going through a shockwave pattern. This would be in the north atrium. South atrium, we have the same artist but depicting uh, D the DNA helix over in that atrium. But basically, it's just, just a kind of a welcome area. We'll have uh, some historic uh, stuff from the crime lab uh, shown out here in, in different lighted cases, but it's just basically a welcome area. I'd like to take you into some of our um, laboratory. First floor, we're gonna go into firearms and kind of show you again what some of the space is all about. And then I'm gonna take you into our forensic imaging. We're still under construction, but what we're looking at now, rather than having our examiners work in their, in their um, workspaces, having all of our administrative work in their workspaces, we're separating this out. This is an administrative space for firearms and for our crime scene investigators, as well as their technical lead. You notice that the, the whole concept here is space and light. Our cubicles are low, they're large, they're six foot by nine foot work, work centers. or giving them, again, space to work. You know, ev even in the bathrooms, even in the bathrooms we're taken and we're looking at a little bit of the DNA uh, graph work that we come up with. And you'll see just on the, on the bathroom walls just some of the, the DNA artwork that we're using. We're gonna go into the firearms and I'll show you where they're gonna be working now. So let's take a look for a minute. In the new lab, we have a positive negative airflow so that air is coming out from the work area into the hallway rather than from the hallway into the work area. And we're, we're trying to minimize contamination. So by having this positive negative airflow, it's, it's, we've reached that point. If you, as you come through the door that you're coming through, that door has to close. And theoretically, when everything is operational, that door has to close before I can open this door, and thereby minimizing any kind of air, air exchange. Basically, it's, just, it's, a, it's kind of like an um, air chamber, air locker, air lock that type arrangement. So come on in, and now we've got space. We have the ability for people to work in various work centers rather than work at a desk. Um, different operations are gonna handle at, e at each center. Our um, NIBIN or IBIS identification system will be out of this room, 125. That's basically looking at uh, cartridge casings for identifications. We also have a, uh, where we can ex actually examine for trace evidence as far as firearms goes. And we have a ceiling mounted microscope that, that are, is articulated and can be you know, centered throughout the whole tabletop. This is something we don't have today. Uh, we have to borrow technology from another unit. So to have firearms have their own scope system and the ability to actually look for trace evidence in an area that's designed for that is something rather unique for us. The biggest tool that the firearms examiner uses is a comparison scope. And right now we have three scopes in one room, the same light for everybody and some people like it dimmer, some people like it brighter, some people like congestion, some people don't. And the other thing too is when the people are going to court, we have to take all the evidence off the scope, lock it up in their drawers, and then when they come back from court, they have to put it back on the scope, and hopefully they, they found the right place. Generally, it takes another couple of hours to get themselves back into sync on where they were previously. So we've wasted a lot of time. What we're doing now is we have actually four separate rooms for the comparison scope. There'll be one scope, one examiner in each room. When the examiner uh, leaves evidence on the scope, he can actually close the door, 
lock it. He's the only one with the key to it. This is a construction key now, but he'll have his own key. He can go back in, finish up his evidence, and we're all good. You can save us an enormous amount of time just in moving uh, our comparison scopes to a private room. We have a, a library of handguns and long guns. Right now we have almost a thousand handguns and long guns we use as a reference library. And this is kind of the place that we're going to be able to store it. Right now we have our weapons stored in various different places and it's kind of hard to use them as a reference material. But by having them in a central location, we'll be able to get to these guns. Um, a lot of people look at it and say, well, you know, that's really neat to have that kind of collection, but do you really use it? And we do. Uh, we've recovered a couple of weapons recently that uh, had to have parts put in it to make them functional. And the, actually the, the forensic side of firearms is to get a bullet to go down the barrel of a weapon. And it's a bullet that we're going to be analyzing. So in order to do that, we may take a spring or we may take uh, a firing pin or something out of a reference weapon and put it into our suspect weapon and make it operational. So that's what we use this for. It'll look a lot different in a couple of weeks.